and welcome to lesson 8 in this 13-part tutorial series on how to create your own fully working Pac-Man game in Scratch. So far we have a map or maze, we have our animated Pac-Man character, we can control that movement of the character around the maze, and we have some little yellow pills that we can actually eat and gain a score from eating. But at the moment the game is rather easy. It's very easy because, of course, there's no risk. Pac-Man can simply uh, collect all the pills just like that, no problem at all. We need an enemy. We need a ghost. So that's what we're going to create in this tutorial today. We're going to create a ghost sprite, and then we'll go on to add some code to control that ghost so it has a mind of its own and it's going to wander the maze wherever it wants. So to begin with then, um, we're going to come down to the sprite section down here. Now you may well have a lot of these sprites now. You'll see I've only put um, about seven or eight of these pills, these yellow pills around the maze. You may have more than that now. Um, however, if you do, just simply uh, ignore that, it doesn't really matter too much. You're going to click on the button at the bottom right and then click on the paintbrush to add yet another sprite. We're going to do this in uh, vector mode. So again, you can tell you're in vector mode because at the bottom left here, we have the option to convert it to bitmap, which we don't want to do. We're going to stay in vector. So step one is that I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to choose the color for this rectangle. I'm going to go for red, so I have a nice red color. I don't want an outline, so I'm going to keep this red uh, stroke red line here selected which means no outline and then I'm going to just zoom in slightly here and create a rough rectangle something like that. Now straight away we can see on the right hand side that is ludicrously big we don't need that size but that doesn't matter because as you may have seen already we can change the size of sprites in the game very very easily so don't worry too much about the size at this point I would just try and keep it um, nice and big here so it's easy to see what you're doing. So I've moved that rectangle over the center point there so it's all nicely lined up and then I'm going to go to the circle over here and don't forget to hold down the shift key when you're drawing a circle so you get a perfect circle. I'm going to move this circle over here. Now it's not quite big enough, so I'm going to just bring that out so that the edges of that circle meet the edges of the rectangle. A little bit like that, I think, just slightly further in on the left. You can obviously spend a little bit more time than I am. There we go, that'll do. It's pretty rough, but uh, although I can see a slight join here, I can't see it over here, and of course this sprite is probably three times, at least three or four times the size of the actual sprite, so we won't ever see that detail, so don't worry too much about it. Now we need a little bit of a, a wiggly um, edge along the bottom. I think he's actually a little bit too tall, so I'm actually going to click this reshape button up here, draw a frame over the bottom of this, and just move this up slightly so it's not quite as tall, a little bit more perhaps slightly, oops, slightly more. There we go, that looks about right to me. Um, so the next thing is to do the uh, wavy bottom. So he has a, a wiggly wavy bottom there, I suppose, because all ghosts obviously wear sheets and they blow in the wind. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the eraser tool here I'm uh, going to have nice large circles, so um, I'm using something like this, it's about size 40, but again, the numbers mean nothing because your uh, sprite may be a different size to mine, you would be zoomed in more than I am. So I'm just going to click down here, in fact I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller, let's try, let's try 30. There we go, that's probably better. It's going to click there, you see when I click it just eats in to that bottom edge and I'm going to just run along the bottom here like that. And you see that creates that wiggly uh, flowing bottom, as it were. Um, there we go. So we've created the bottom part of the um, 
ghost. We need to do the eyes now. So I'm going to click back on the circle and I'm going to change this color to white. Uh, I can do that by bringing the saturation all the way down to the bottom there. And I'm going to now hold down shift and create a circle. So I'm going to have something like that. There we go. And then move that into position. Sometimes it's easy to look over here to, to see what it kind of looks like um, in the game. There we are. That looks fine to me. So I'm going to hold down control and press C and then hold control down and press V. So I get a copy of that eye and I'm going to move it over here. So there we are. Something like that. Now you'll see that the um, character, the eyes are not central, they're slightly pointing to the left. So this character currently is going to be facing left. Um, and what I'm going to do, in fact, actually, I'm going to make it go right, I think, rather than left, because the default position is facing right. But when he moves and he starts to head to the left, direction, we can actually flip the character a bit like we did with Pac-Man so that he looks left or right, depending on which way he's facing. Let's just move those eyes slightly further over. There we are. That's good. And now I'm going to create another circle here for the pupils in the eyes. And this is going to be black. I can do that quickly by just dragging the brightness at the bottom all the way down. So let's now create a slightly smaller circle. And this is where it helps to be zoomed in so that you can see things a bit more clearly. And move that over there, somewhere like that. Control C, Control V to get a copy and put that one just in that eye there. Does that look all right? I think he's just slightly further that way. There we go. That looks fine to me. Remember, you can get really precious about the detail here. I know I can get quite uh, frustrated sometimes with getting it all lined up perfectly. But when you look over here, there's no way you can see that level of detail at all. So don't worry too much about that. There we are. Uh, so we created that ghost. Now we will want to create more ghosts in future and we'll be able to change the color of those. But for the moment, we'll stick with just the one ghost. So I'm going to click on the code tab over here. This, of course, is the code for the ghost. We don't have any yet, so don't worry about that. And then I'm going to move the ghost to where I want it to start. I think probably in this middle uh, place here might be good. Um, or yeah, I think yeah that'll be all right. We'll start him there. But he's obviously too big, so let's reduce the size. Let's try going down to 20. Oh, no, that's far too small. Let's try 40. Again, we need to check that he can fit in the corridor. I think he can just fit there. I think very slightly smaller. I think maybe 36. There we are. 36 looks right. Now, again, that looks really small. But remember, most people are playing the game full screen. And at this size, that's perfect. That's absolutely fine. So there we are. We'll just make sure that we've got him in the start position. Um, I'm going to start him. I think I'm going to start him. I'm going to start him at the top. There we are, right in the top of the middle, like that. So there we are. We've created our ghost sprite. Now, of course, you can create your sprites however you like. As I've said all through this tutorial series, you don't have to create a Pac-Man clone. You can do if you want to. Uh, but if you want to make them look slightly different, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but these drawing techniques and these, these techniques at least show you some of the tools that you can use to create your own version of the Pac-Man game. Now we have our sprite, our ghost sprite, our enemy, but he's not really very dangerous at the moment because, of course, he's not moving. And so there's no need for Pac-Man to go anywhere near him. So in the next lesson, lesson nine, we're going to look at how to program the ghost so he's able to move around the maze all by himself.